everybody. Welcome to another session of Free Game. Um, for everybody who doesn't understand what Free Game is, it's just basically a brain dump. Um, I've had the experience of working in our industry for 20 years, doing a bunch of things. Um, and this isn't just about sneaker culture, it's just about life. Um, sometimes we come into sessions with uh, topics to talk about, but I feel like there's been so much going on that I, uh, we, we would like to leave space to just talk and leave room for personal growth and development for anybody present. So I just want to uh, tell everybody online what's up and then um, everybody in space, uh, we could just form some questions. We'll go at it for uh, an hour at least. And if it gets really interesting, we can make it as long as it needs to go. But I come out today just to listen and dump and help anyone and everyone grow as much as they possibly can. And answer any questions that anyone possibly has. Um, so we could start in space. Uh, uh, Tara, Mark, who's helping with questions online? I'm going to take the questions online, Tara. Just so has I know who space. I'm talking to, to, to direct traffic. So I'll be responsible for questions in space. And Mark will handle the Zoom questions. So do you guys want to start in space or online? Somebody feel free to jump in or if everybody just come to listen to me talk, then this may be a short session because today was a long one and I need a drink. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but no, let's, let's get going. I see questions popping up online already. Um, this is going to be a little informal because normally we talk and go for a while, but I think we've been getting a lot of requests and a lot of questions. So I really just want to leverage the entire session to answer any question that you possibly have about anything. Uh, that I could potentially answer. So uh, go for it. Uh, Tara, Mark, y'all y'all, y'all tell me what to do and I'm going to do it. Cool. Tara, if you don't mind, I can kick off with a question from that we actually got from Discord. Uh, it's a question from NCAL Soulmates. Your collaborations have been huge in the sneaker community and your designs inspired by the current sneaker culture. Or do you feel the trends are a response to your designs and influence? AKA, what inspires your collaborations and how are you going to see, uh, how are we going to see the collaboration sort of evolve over the next few years? Uh, from a collaborative product perspective, I could honestly say I'm not that driven by product per se. Um, probably driven by the message that goes into the product more than the product per se. Obviously, there's, there's, there's like following an aesthetic and a thought process that goes into it. And I still 100% get excited about product, but isn't the first thing that we think about. I think the first thing that we think about is the story that we want to tell against the product and what's meaningful for our partner uh, that we're working with. And in this case, uh, it's been, it's been a, a whole lot of Nike and Jordan, and it'll probably continue to be, um, at least from a collaborative perspective, but from a from purely design, it's just it's just about connecting to the story and working on models that are meaningful uh, to the kids that we want to excite. I know that's probably a bland answer, but it's it's more about the stories than it is about the product. Like the product is the product is a vessel to get the story out. So like it's dope to actually like physically wear a product. We all got to put it on social say social cachet. This this their social cachet is connected to the product. But at the end of it, like if you if you see uh, like me most of the time, and it's, it's never about like never going to see me get oh, I'll I be oh shit excited about the product, but more about how the message delivers and how people connect it all together. All right, I'm Tara, Mark, y'all driving. So y'all y'all talk. I'm a y'all talk and I'm gonna respond. No problem. Do we have, a Do we have any yeah. questions uh, for James here in space? Yeah, okay, we got one. And again, usually guys, we come in with a topic. So we're usually talking and engaging, but today again, I wanted to leverage. I want to I want to be intentional about leveraging all of the time for questions today. So my question is- Oh, you got to start with your name, bro. Oh, Jeffrey. Nice to Sorry, meet you, Jeffrey. Came from no, 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 listen, bro. All good. So my question is a lot of like the affiliates like uh, Nike, Adidas, and those type of brands want you to kind of like work backwards, like have a brick and mortar store, then fill out the form to because um, fill out the form and then you get approved or um, like to sell their product. Like how do you probably get away from that brick, like brick and mortar to get approved from some of those affiliates like that? You can't. Okay. Is the real answer. 
Like I can sit here and, and tell you, like, I don't think there, I don't think there's a major brand in like real answer that's gonna say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start you online only. Like uh if you think about the from a pure business perspective, the world's going vertical, right? You see, you see DTC, you see uh there wasn't a there wasn't a Gucci store in South Park Mall. I haven't been in South Park Mall in years, but I hear there's a Gucci store there now, right? So I'm not crazy, but you're seeing more of that now. Brands want to be vertical, like their own. If you look at if you look at big corporations report, they're talking about direct to consumer. If you look at Apple report, they're talking about direct to consumer. So if you wanted to open up a digital store, you're just competing against their own platform, right? The idea of brick and mortar and engaging is, is, is standing up for something a little more than just commerce, because like doing commerce respectfully is easily, that's just the money grab. And if respectfully, if you're building your own business, you wanna grab your own money, right? So from a business perspective, you gotta state the case and build the perspective for who you are. If you can build a case for having a, uh, being able to define a consumer marketplace different than a bigger brand, then have at it. But when you start looking at the global marketplace to compete and build the brand that way, you can do anything, right? Anything's achievable. Right. But it's, it's lightning in the bottle. Um, I don't know if I've seen any direct mark. Hold me accountable to this. Have we seen any ver have we seen any retailers start online? Even if you look at Essence and Porter, which is the two who the people go to most and I haven't clicked on either in a while. It was years before they sold Nike product and if or, or Adidas product. And if so, it's like very little. Right. So the idea of a startup online is tough without brick and mortar. So the easy answer is you gotta you gotta find form a point of view at brick and mortar. Or if you're gonna work to build online, you have to build such a strong online community that it forces the brand to have to want to work with you. Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. We have another question here. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Jay, and I first want to say I appreciate you having these free games. I've been on a couple online, and they've all been been great. Um, but I wanted to ask you a question. I, I know you probably told this story a thousand times before, but just how being a guy from Pittsburgh, how did you get started in the game? Because I'm also from Pittsburgh, living here in Charlotte. You know, I'm in the fashion industry. But so I, it could be the quick version. It could be the long version, however you want to do it, going from being in Pittsburgh or being in college at nine to five, whatever you were doing, then you got a story. I mean, you got a store in East Lib. You know, how do you how did you go from that point to having a store? Because I've been past that store a thousand times. It wasn't until I moved down here. I said, yeah, a guy named James from Pittsburgh, you know, has a store. So, but anyway, I found you on the social, started following your stuff. Love all the free games, all the all the gems you dropping. So just want to give you your flowers for that. Uh -huh. The short abbreviated version is, it's a sound like super basic. I started by starting. My timing was also good. Like Henry Ford had really good timing, right? Steve Jobs had an incredible timing. Like they're incredibly smart people, but some of it is just timing. Like in 2005 or 2004, um, big brands were more interested in what's happening in street culture because they, no, they had no entryway in, right? And, and there were only bigger stores and, Ah, damn, my age is going to show. At some point in the early 2000s, Foot Locker and Nike went to war. And Foot Locker wasn't carrying Nike, and Nike wasn't messing with Foot Locker, right? And it comes come around, and they started, Nike started to realize, and I'm focusing on footwear, right? Nike started to realize that there was a present. And from an apparel side, I think you've always seen in Pittsburgh, we had Mo Gear back then. Um, before Mo Gear, we had uh, damn. I, I ain't gonna show my age. I'll just stop at Mo Gear, right? Um, but if you remember Mo Gear, it only sold sneakers, right? So I was I was the kid that was going to Mo Gear for whatever reason. I've said it now. Committed a few felonies in my life. So we shopped and shopped and shopped and shopped. And I always thought to myself, like, damn, we giving this dude all this money, and we breaking the law for money. And this dude is, we coming in here fifty, a hundred deep. All of us dropping a thousand, two thousand at a time. We just gave this dude a hundred thousand. He ain't broke a law, right? So I thought to myself, like, damn, this don't add up. Something ain't adding up here, right? Especially when you end up incarcerated. You know Pittsburgh well. I just put another friend in the ground. We're working on putting another friend in the ground at home right now. So if you know home, home is home. So it's super easy 
to start to realize, at least for me, I was like, uh, odds there, odds here. And I packed my bags and came here. And I packed my bags to come, to come here just to be able to focus on what I thought that I could get off. And it was first that. It was first Mo Gear, right? Just the idea of like serving people in our culture, things that are meaningful to us and doing it in a way that was unique. And then as I got into it, like every day, uh, shout out to my man Hutch. I would talk to him every day and he would just push me on ways that I could get better. And he always done it until I started telling him ways that I was going to get better. And then I was able to start putting those ways into motion and fast forward 17 years. And here we are. Sarah, do we have a question? Here the question. Oh, there you go. Mark, we have a thing online? Uh, we have some hands raised, but we'll go to space first and then we'll take one of the hands raised online. In space, they, they still heating up over here. Let's go online. All right, got you. So we have a question uh, from Luceni. Luceni, uh, if you want to unmute yourself, you'll be able to do that. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Luceni. Um, been around free game for a while. So James, a uh, question is, I noticed that y'all have been emphasizing a lot on content. What does that look like for you all at the highest level? Um, any plans to produce short films, series, or, you know, go for an Oscar? <laughs> Uh, Mark, Marcus on the line. When, when we shot Free Game, and we we met we met with the Turner brothers, and shout out to uh, Julian and Justin. That they're, they're 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 young, right? And we're young in this, so we go in believing like, oh yeah, fuck, we gonna try to win an Oscar, right? Like, who, who who's to say that we can't, right? You start seeing that, start seeing people at film festivals put films out, and the film is just uh, an expression of their feelings, right? So for us, once we got with guys that are truly motivated to tell stories in a unique way, like we're, we're definitely going to push the limits of, of storytelling and how it looks. And we go as we go, right? Like, I think we're starting to see a uh, free lunch developed in a recess. Recess will have a part two. Um, we're going to continue to tell that story against Alma Minyar. We'll continue to um, really try to connect to issues that, um, that, it pisses us off as black folks, right? This is just probably the, the easiest way to say it. We'll we'll attack very hard issues with Amma Minier because it's a much much it's a much more mature audience and people who can process those feelings. But with social status, because it's a younger it's a younger kid, we'll be fun. We'll we'll, we'll have fun and we'll show a one the one to one uh, black experience coming from poverty. So we're definitely going to continue to evolve those. And, and if we're going to work, then we're going to work to try to accomplish the highest possible goal. So shit, hopefully at some point we're going to be sitting at the Oscars. Terry, do we have a question from space? Otherwise I can take one um, from online and Discord too as well. You could take one, Mark. Perfect. Uh, James, we have one here. Um, Brick and mortar, online shops, social media shops, social media shopping. What do you think the next retail avenue is? AKA, how do you see the retail space evolve? And what are the trends that you're seeing emerge? So I, the question is, what experience, what, what experience will we tack next? What tack next? Was that it? In, in short? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah I, shit, I think whatever feels good. I think the, the good part about living life is that's just it. Like, I think people, we, we don't, we don't always plan. Like we could be having dinner somewhere and like, yo, this is good. Like, can we do this? And it kind of, it kind of goes that way. Like, uh, um, I got to get to Singapore cause I haven't been, but there's this idea of getting to Singapore to see what'll happen and see what we can create because Singapore like sounds cool. Right. Like it, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's truly the human experience, right? Like when we talk experience, it's literally us as humans living out experiences and then saying like, how would those experiences connect to our audience in a meaningful way? And how do we connect them to these experiences that we get the privilege to feel? So I'm, I'm always connected to who I am as a person and how I feel as a person. So I just want to duplicate that experience and make it more accessible to other people, if that makes sense. So right now it's a, it's eats, it's uh, a lot of lounges. We're doing a lot of food, a lot of lounge, a lot of art, 
um, a lot of ocean and we'll, we'll see all those things connect, but, and that's not I'm a year sad, but it's really about how it, how it connects to like a youth culture and, and a black experience and how we can, um, how we can let, how we can make it accessible. Yeah. So the short answer is honestly, I don't think there's anything that's crazy new. Hospitality is going to be the craziest one. I think people are going to be caught off guard by like some of the things to start to roll out that we're already doing. Um, and like Pittsburgh with flagship and Baltimore, we've been working on some projects for three years. So I think some of those projects will start to roll out. And I think people will start to see like a different way that we're expressing ourselves. Just to build on that question, is there any are there any experiences out there that you're you're fascinated by? You talked about Singapore. Any things that stand out to you that you find are, are pushing the envelope in the industry? Um, I tend to focus on what we're doing, but when I think when I think interesting, I'm selfish, so it's what's interesting to me, right? And like the only thing that's interesting to me is the things that we talk about every day. So it's like. It's the 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 plight I'm I'm obsessed with like what's happening uh, with the polarization of politics and global um global divisiveness and the idea of uh of taking centuries steps backwards. So like as much as it's like fun to think about like a yacht party, there's this other part of me that like thinks that women just lost their abortion rights. So I don't know how people feel about that, right? Or their feelings on abortion, but I think about like human rights and, and I get more obsessed with that and the idea of like you go into schools and just see some of the shit that we see in 2022 and where I am in my life, uh, I live in privilege, right? At, in, at a level because I can afford most things now, like I'm not stressing about my mortgage. So I, I tend to think and empathize with other people's journeys and think about what we can do with our platform to help them. So when, when I start looking at other retailers, I'm I'm like holding them accountable to like, like what the fuck y'all doing for real? So I'm not looking at like how they're serving, I'm looking at how they're serving, serving, serving people back, if that makes sense. We spent a lot of time trying to get be social right. I asked, we spent 45 minutes with Mark asking questions about space and community and building it and making sure it's all aligning to the narrative and tearing it down and rebuilt it back up. So respectfully, I don't know if I have time lately to do anything outside of care about what we're trying to build in our point of view. Um, but yeah, there's tons of cool product, but again, I wear black every day. So I'm like, as it, as it associates, it's B's job to say at a lot of times was cool. And I'll say back to him, is it? Why? Right. And, and we'll go back and forth and I'll engage and I see things and I'll still live the experience, but I'm, I'm very, very, very caught up in the human experience as it connects to people um, uh, less about product and even had how our experiences excite people to want to do work less about just wanting to be cool or be seen. If that makes sense. I have a question here. What's up? What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Jared Humor. I'm based here in Charlotte. I want to shout out my man's KJ for the invite. Um, I'm always here locally, always shopping every other week. Uh, I wanted to speak a little bit more current. I have the pennies on right now. Um, I wanted to hear a little bit more about that process. Obviously, I'm a fan of basketball in itself and the nostalgia of the shoe. I um, just wanted to hear what, what that process was like working with Nike and make it, bring it to fruition. Uh, thank you for the support first. I mean, it's... Uh... Knowing how 90, with 90s basketball, if you talk about product for a second, um, it was said like, hey, 90s basketball was super, it's an, it's an error, right? Like we're, we're not going to get 84 back the same way people in the 60s is probably trying to get back whatever they're trying to get back. So we're not getting that back. But there was this era of basketball that existed was so, that was so special. And um, the team at Nike was so interested in that era so we immediately went to like Penny, right? It was it was something that at that time when 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 Penny dropped that shoe, MJ was chilling. Like MJ was on retirement, 
Then he came in a league and had Shaq and he was killing motherfuckers. So that shoe, if you lived in that time, it meant something. So for us, that was it. It's like, yo, no one's really touched the shoe for a while. Let's, let's touch the shoe in a meaningful way and connect it to something that's important, hence recess, right? So we were coming off of the story of free lunch and recess, the way y'all see it isn't how it was viewed. It was supposed to be free lunch, not wait a year, then recess. It was supposed to be free lunch, wait two months, then recess, right? But the pandemic happened and everything got a bit pushed. So that story was all interconnected. The kids were going from free lunch in the summertime then they go back to school and go to recess, right? But the story was just connected to bringing the idea of the things that happened at recess. And for us growing up, recess, before school, after school, everything was so basketball driven. And kids kids then didn't have slides, shoes to go to school in, in a basketball shoe. That was all one shoe. And Penny was one of those shoes that represented that time in the world. So we wanted to tell that story, but we appreciate the support and the connecting to you. Jerry, do we have another question in space? Hello, everybody. My name is Cam, Cam Mitchell, based out of Charlotte as well. Uh, quick question. So when you go through the collaboration and you're picking materials, colors, things like that, what's, what's going through your head? It depends on the day, right? Like in what we're trying to accomplish. Um, a shoe like Penny, we don't, we don't, in my book, you don't fuck with OGs. Like you just don't, right? Like there's a lot of things that you can play with, but you just gotta, like I'm a respectful, like integrity dude. Like, so when, you, when you've done something or you have a body of work, I believe you got to pay homage to the body of work. So for Penny, it was like, yo, pay homage to, the, to that air and body of work. If you go back to like free lunch, that was tell a story about free lunch, chocolate milk and strawberry milk on a dunk, right? So you like every dunk that you care about has a cool name, like the whatever dunk or this dunk or that dunk. So immediately it was like, yeah, put every fucking material under the sun on the sample, see what comes back and we'll minimize, right? So it's, it's, it's thinking about like, there's a history. I, I heard, uh, oh, I went to go see the play MJ. And, and, and the character to play Michael, Michael Jackson was talking to Quincy Jones. And before they made Thriller, they listened to every number one song in history, through and through, to hear the music and understand why this song became a number one hit. I'm a student of it, right? Like, and, and you got to respect everything. So I think at some point, I go on a random Google and then I'll hit a chat that we got like internal chats. And then I'll just start like, like thinking like, yo, what's this or why was this or is this important? And then I'll, I'll ask, I ask people around me the same question. Am I crazy? Or is this, this like to make sure that I'm seeing something the right way, because just because I see it that way, does it mean that it's as uh, it, it, other people reference it the same way. Right. So, the process is simple, it's collective, it's not always me. It could be someone said something to me, it could be somebody walked in a room, it could be something that I've seen. But I'm just like, we're the same. Like, I'm, I don't think I got no, there are superpowers that I have, but I think um, everybody has a good book in them, everybody has a good shoe in them, everybody has a good, right? And once you catch a rhythm and you get an audience, then you can build some momentum and get a bit of an aesthetic, right? And like, I think we've, we've been blessed in a way that um, people support um, what it is that we, that we represent, right? And the ideas that we put forward and it's connecting to real, it's connecting to real stories. So uh, milk and isolation don't mean shit, but milk and free lunch means a lot, right? And even like Kev is Canadian, I don't know where he's at. So when, when we said free lunch to him, he was like, what the fuck is you talking about? We got free lunch in Canada. <laughs> like, like, chill, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, you think free healthcare, but not free lunch, <laughs> right? But once he got it, he got it. Does that make sense? So it's just, it's just those things, nuance, and paying attention to maniacally focusing on who your audience is and why. And not following y'all off a bridge, because y'all motherfuckers are going left sometimes. And I got to be like, let me know what's over there when y'all get over there. Right. But it's it's paying attention to the audience and making sure that you 
you um you know who you're serving. Got one for you, uh, KJ with the Whitaker Group. So, for like the pennies again, right? So that's like a a sub genre of sneakers, right? Like Nike basketball, right? How do you, I guess, pivot and kind of, like you said, you don't you don't you don't fuck with the OGs, right? But at the same time, you want to make sure that we're uh, educating. You know what I mean? Like everybody that's out here that's new to the sneaker game, that the whole dunk wave and the whole ones game waves. Like, how do you still, I guess, educate and 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 make a sneaker like the penny or a foam or any any of the you know that whole Nike basketball wave? Like, how do you make that appealing to the masses? Well, you want the corporate answer or the real answer? <laughs> so it's a, it's a, listen. Um, from a product perspective, um, some of it's nuance, right? Or it's just said it's all nuance, but some of it's lived experience. Most of the people in the room didn't live, most of y'all wasn't probably fucking born in 95, right? So I can't expect y'all to have had the penny experience in 95, right? So some of it is building that in first making you guys understand why pennies is important. It's a basketball shoe. So Penny Hardaway, y'all got YouTube. We got YouTube. So that's the first point, like educating and getting people to understand. The other part is the machine, right? Sometimes the machine will deem something important, right? Because I'm gonna get in trouble for saying it. Fuck it, I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, Tanisha is laughing because this is the point where she's <laughs> about to say some shit. Um, humans can be a bit of clone sometimes right in in individualism and idealism only exist at a really really small level most people aren't really as cool as they think they are right like one percent of people Let's just talk about Kanye West for a second. One motherfucker, one dude, Kanye West, has affected a generation in how they think, right? In some way, shape, form, or fashion, because being accepted in social cachet is so important to humans and, and, and um, the human condition that humans are a better sheep. So when you start to see sneaker culture, what sneaker culture is, is social currency, right? Like you're wearing something that's unique, right? And because you're wearing that thing, you're wearing it to define yourself, right? But we all look up to somebody, right? So if we see the person who we look up to, right? Because we all got to have mentors, you know, the whole shit, you know how it works, right? The person who's doing it before you go find that person because that person's going to help you get to your spot. When you see your guy or your gal in a, fucking um in the thing right you're like damn that's dope I, I want that right and then it begins right and the 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 idea of us kind of a bit copy and pasting the things that we want so when you talk about how do we start these journeys it starts there right somebody has to have a feeling and it has to mean something to someone important or not, right? Because the, you can't, you, you also can't force it, right? Because the penny is nostalgic, but um, the penny one is nostalgic. The penny two is probably more on trend for, for today's kid, right? And we knew that going into the process, but that doesn't mean you don't do it anyway, right? So to answer your question, it's... Um, to get people to know is a joint venture between the kids on the corner, like y'all actually choose, right? At scale. Like when y'all say, when, when, when Evelyn says to Brandon, honey, you look cute in that. Brandon buys more of that, right? It's, it's, it's a natural human condition, right? So y'all start to dictate. And then I'm just looking at y'all. I'm like, oh, damn, they responded to that. They responded to that. Oh, that's interesting. So I'm looking around. I see sneaker. I see some slides. I see some heels. Right. It's, it's programmed in me, right? 
So you start to see what the kids, what kids will react to. And then every once in a while, you got to throw some shit at them to see who reacts to some shit like you and be like, oh, that's fucking weird. No, that's not you. It's calf. And then Yoon is his co-defendant. They'll see something weird and they'll be like, oh, this is cool. And I'm like, that shit is weird. But it's their point of view because they want to push, right? They want to do something different. And if you don't do something different, you never get, you never get yay. If you don't get yay, you don't get the last 15 years of everything that's happened. And I would say the world's better because of Kanye West. Um, I know we have some questions in space, but I do want to uh, give our Zoom family some love too. So, uh, Mark, do you have any questions right now? We do. We have a few hands up. And again, if you have your hands up, you may have gotten a note from me. Just drop me your question so we can prioritize it. Uh, but I'm just going to go real quick to the first one I got there, uh, which was from Lena. And I'm just going to ask them you there to ask your question. Um, sorry, I have my camera off at the moment, but um, first I wanted to thank you, Mr. Whitner, because I'm actually one of your Parsons scholars. So thank you for that. And um, my question is kind of, what is the Whitaker's group like stance on sustainability going forward? Because like we are moving toward a more like environmentally conscious world, especially in the fashion industry, from my experience, like interning in it. And I just want to know what you plan to do with your company regarding that. Well, two things. Um, good question. And first, well, first, thank you for participating. Second, good question. Um, I got two thoughts about sustainability. The first one is um, poor people don't care about sustainability. It's more of a comment, right? Um, when you're poor, you're conditioned to just think about what you need to, to get back not how it processes in, in the earth. So sustainability is, is the first world issue. Um, who we serve largely um, are uh, communities of color, right? So I first condition myself to think about what's happening for us. Second um, is I do agree with you that sustainability is hugely important. So a lot of what we're doing with APB on the apparel line, um, Kev and team, um, they started rolling APB out as all fully sustainable. And we're even thinking about ways to make our APB store fully sustainable. But if you ask me my priority first, the priority first would be to empower people um, to not be poor and second sustainability, right? Like I believe uh, there's, there's a lot of issues that stand up for me before sustainability, uh, women's rights, human's rights, uh, systemic racism, fucking Asian hate. I could, I could name probably 20 things and then I would get the sustainability, right? I do, I do, I, I would say, uh, I would say that um, sustainability from the perspective of like LVMH to selling fucking thousand dollar bags. Yeah, they should figure that out. I would say that bigger brands um, can, can think of how to produce the things that we love in more sustainable ways. As a company, the way we function um, for the things that we make, uh, we're being mindful of it, but for our dollars invested in, will be um, community first and in prioritization, sustainability is definitely um, a priority, but not top 10 based on who our audience is. Jonathan Jones, I'm gonna ask John, you yourself there. Yeah, Mark, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yep. All right, so thank you for having this forum with us. My name is Jonathan Jones. Uh, I have a, two questions. Uh, what is the Whitaker Group and what made you wanna start it? And what type of business is it? So the Whitaker Group, the easiest way to say it is it's an experiential community focus agency, I guess, because like the idea of being a retailer or saying retailer just 
I wouldn't say that in a room. Like, it's just because it's not who we are anymore. Um, our our goal is to just uh, put our point of view forward uh, into society and create experiences that allow us to engage in a meaningful way to solve for the issues of humanity while doing cool shit in the process. So how we earn money to do the things that we co- we care about is uh, connecting with the consumer via consumer goods, but the outcome isn't just purely profit. It's, it's, it's about the, the bigger goal of object, bigger goal or objective is um, affecting um, the world and in, 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 in the plight of humanity I would say, and I mean, it, it shows itself in, we do hospitality, we do food, uh, we connect to consumers. But again, I spend most of my time thinking about how we do all of those things and create an ecosystem that makes the people who we serve better um, and partner with people who we think are like-minded and have has a shared vision who want to bring cool shit to the world. And I, and I guess... I'm in a funky mood today about work. So I'm like bucking the whole cool system. And sometimes I, I hate our industry. Um, and today it's just one of those days. Um, um, because I just want to solve sometimes and I want to, I want to leverage everything in the world to solve. And that's not how it always works, but, um, that's the Whitaker group. The name is the name because I grew up in Whitaker projects so it's a bit of a double entendre that I work I work for where I'm from. If that makes sense, and it's connected, and it's about being being in that space because I'm I'm infatuated with my process of uh, helping a younger version of myself because I feel like that's uh, the world that we live in right now. Yeah, we can take some. Few Are questions. you taking more questions? We'll take a few more in space and then I'll just work back through the ones online here. Okay. All right, we have a question here. Hi, James. How you doing? I'm Chris from Orangeburg, South Carolina, by way of Charlotte now. Um, with the state of our nation today, you know, noting that we are steadily, you know, approaching a bear market and if not already in a recession, approaching a recession, twofold question one, have you felt any pressure from corporate higher ups at Nike or within your own organization to slow down on future releases or delay, if anything, because of what's about to happen? Or two, have you ever thought about making the Whitaker Group or taking it public at all? Or have you like decided, no? Uh, second question first, we don't accept outside capital. No one in the world would be able to deal with me every day. There we go. The people who work with me probably do it every day. But Thank you. I digress. Uh, from, from, a, from a going public perspective, um, it just is not something that I care to think about, right? Like I, we get to we get to like put it on our sleeve and do what we want to do. And I don't I don't want to like say, hey, we want to do this idea. Hold on, let me call and check. Do this, please. Okay. We would never get shit done. So. Like we we keep control that way. So our company is 100% owned by, this, the other part is we don't control launch, right? Of other people's product. The only thing we can control launch on the things, the things that we create ourselves. And we don't ever get calls from, recessions don't affect big companies in a way that you guys think. If if companies are well, well uh, if, if they're capitalized in a meaningful way, they may lose um, some 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 dollars on their stock price, right? Maybe 20, 50 percent, right? So that means they may need to cut back or do some other things. Executive bonuses don't get that big. You usually see if it's a recession, it's about correcting something, correcting something that's wrong in the economy. In 08, uh, there was something wrong with the housing system and subprime marketing. So that broke and you've seen companies that over leveraged and participated in that in a, a piggish way go bankrupt. I don't think that's what this downturn is going to be about. I think this downturn is just going to be about correcting all the ills of the financial system. So 
big companies care in a meaningful way, but they just continue planning and they just slow down a few things in the process. So I think we're all mindful of what it is that we're getting after, but from a marketplace recession, sure, we're cutting, we're not overbuying. I think B is probably watching his balance a lot different than he did um, a year ago, but from a planning perspective, again, we're so focused on what we're focused on and we're focused on partnering in a meaningful way. And now I'm like, yo, I spend more time thinking about 2030 and 2040 than what you, I've aged myself to 80 already. Like I could tell you about what I'm gonna do when I'm 81 and not really, but kinda. But the planning that goes into trying to figure out how to create what it is that we wanna create. I spend most of my time obsessing about what we do. Our team really runs our company. I lean in and say, oh no, we probably shouldn't do that. That's uh, we gonna fuck something up, but we good otherwise, right? And other times I'm like, oh damn, that's great. I would have never thought about that, right? I just do strategic planning, visioning, overseeing, checking in. Things good? Yeah, they're good. You need something? Well, this person ain't calling me back. Cool, I'll call them and tell them to call you back and I'll keep calling them until they do. Does that mean? I block down field for our team to work. And I, I vision a strategic plan and think about um, what are the things we want to get after and why, and then call our team and ask, can we do that? And they'll be like, ah, if we try it this way or try it that way, and then I can tinker back with the idea or they might come back and say, you should think about it this way. Does that make sense? That's more about how it all works. First, I want to say uh, you know, thanks for doing this. Um, it's actually coincidental. Like last week, we did a breakdown of the, the complex video. Um, and one of the things you mentioned in is wanting to build legacy. And we was going into conversation, do live on like YouTube and stuff like that. Um, actually, complex took it down. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it was one piece you were talking about legacy. And I was just thinking, I was like, you know, the storytelling that you do, right? It's so in depth to the point that for the first time, like I like with the chocolate milks and strawberry milks, the packaging, everything around it, it was like, if you didn't know, if you wasn't doing your due diligence online to figure out what it was about with free lunch, you had to go figure out because the whole box, right? Or even with the pennies, we did like a 30 minute, like dissertation trying to figure out what the switches, what sports were they? <laughs> but was that intentional in the sense of it's, kind of creating your own space in like the, the Nike world and things of that sort in a way that never been done before. Or you just like storytelling. Both. We own our space. Like, listen, you know, the thing I own everything. And I've said it before, you know, when you grow up piss porn, you're like, damn, this is fucked up. I own that. I own, I own my plight. It's mine. Like I own my incarceration. I own my not eating. I own, any of y'all ever seen Mama? It's 15 minute, uh, 15 minute like short film on Showtime. Like, check it out. It's 15 minutes. The shit is crazy. I ain't, I ain't going like, it's 15 minutes. So I can't tell y'all nothing except to watch it and then like hit me and be like, yo, this shit's crazy. But to answer your question, they're our stories. Uh, for so long, we've watched, um, People who just come in and dictate to us our stories. When's the last time we seen like Boys in the Hood with Shout Win? Fuck. So like who who who's really meaningfully telling our stories? And there's a responsibility for us to tell our stories. So to answer your question, yes, all of those balls, we sat there and was like, baseball, that's the net. When you, you know, when you when you go into recess and you don't give a fuck about the net because you only playing what you want to play. But in the in that net, there's a red volleyball, there's a yellow this ball, and a yellow. And once you start telling the story, that's the beautiful part about working with the Nike team. They start geeking out too, like, oh my God, we done this and we done that. And you got all these personalities, because remember it's a global business, right? And storytelling is global. The same way everybody in here is eating something Asian infused right now, right? And most of the room ain't been nowhere near Asia, right? But the idea of it is global, right? Because someone put that in and it started to go to scale. So for us, 
we have to make sure our real stories are cutting through. And we talk a lot about, about generations, like everybody ain't poor, but black people got to fucking the U S on the boat. Most of us, not all of us. Right. So we're all degrees out of slavery. And when you start talking about the walls that's put up, a large percent of us are stuck in that first generation in poverty still. Right. So if we are not telling those stories to get us out, and if I don't sit here and say it's the whole pur purpose of free game, me like having it because I understand the uniqueness of, of my situation. Like most of the people where I'm from, I ain't sitting where I'm sitting and I understand that. So because I understand that, I'm being intentional about telling our stories and I'm being intentional about making myself accessible to anybody else who needs the information so it could be easier for them to get to where they want to go. Does that answer the question? Okay, thank you. We gotta introduce ourselves. Oh, that's okay. I'm Lito. Um, this is like I got a compound question for you. So you're responsible for six brands or five. I can't count uh, for at least that's four, five, six. There's probably more than that, but let's 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 say six. Okay, so um, my question to you about that is balance. So what takes priority? What when you're into your design phase or just kind of going into your mode? What's prioritized as far as like what do you go to, or do you just let the ideas kind of float you? It's it's. I, it depends on what I'm driving, right? Because again, we have to, we got, we got tons and tons of partners, right? Lido has known me since Flavor Factory, like when they was kids, him fucking um, Chris, and I can keep naming, but the business has evolved now to where I have to listen to our brand partners and what it is that they need. And then I have to listen to our team and hear what they think we need from their perspective. And then I have to balance the two, right? And then everybody starts to play a piece. Tanisha might say, yo, fuck, APB in Tallahassee has this thing happening where all the kids only want to fuck with this and we got to keep building it for them. All of a sudden, that can become a priority, right? But if not, if something hot doesn't come like that, it's really just about the balance of our understanding what our strategic strategic priorities are and in a in a balance like right now people because of the three people all of a sudden was like oh shit I'm a Meyer and then it was social status right but internally our team is hyper focused on APB right in 38A which we haven't really started working on and all these other things that I could start telling y'all about but I got to wait because they got this shit called embargo and if I say something my phone will ring and I'll get in trouble um, but there's all these things that we're working on. But at the end of it, it's just about what has the most impact for the world and for our connection to it. Does that make sense? So we got to balance like impact and in, in how we want to roll things out. Like everybody's talking about whatever leaks they see on the internet and they're focused on the product. They don't have a clue what we want to talk about. So they like, oh, if you see some really good product, you know we about to say some crazy shit. Like, I'm about to say some shit that's going to make somebody mad, right? But it's our responsibility. Does that make sense? So it's it's about, yeah, like, I want to create something dope or we create something dope. And the better it is, the harder we're going to push and the message on what's connected to that is going to be polarizing us some. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. And I had one more, if that's okay. Go ahead. Um, you got a weird eye, I would say, for talent. And um, so you pick Charlotte, and then Charlotte's like, boom, now. Best economy, everything like that. So um, when you kind of going in and making those choices as far as who I want to work with, where we're going to be, is that more of a gut feeling? Are you doing the due diligence as far as e economy at that location? Or are you just saying like, hey, I just want to take this shit over? Well, AJ now has that responsibility <laughs> in partnership with Tanisha and Kev. It's, it's a bit of all of it, man. Like in the beginning, 
I had to have a real lived experience. I still do it today. We, we going to London, right? Well, I shouldn't have said that, but fuck it. I can say it now, right? But I'm going to London at the end of the month to stay for two weeks. Why? I ain't doing no fucking research. I'm going out. I'm going where everybody don't want to go. I'm going where people get stabbed. I'm going where people say it's scary. I'm going to go stay out all fucking night. I'm going to go run around like I'm a 21 year old because that lived experience will tell me what I need to know. It's, it's something about the lived experience that you can't, like you can't, you can't tell me. Like I, I, I know how to move, right? So I know who I need to move around. So and, and you can't scale that, right? I can't tell KJ, yeah, KJ, you got a wife and kids, but go around to the all night spot and stay in there all night. That doesn't, that thinking doesn't scale, right? So it's, it's obviously there's demographics. You can start to see where, where there's important places, but for APB, we focused on HBCUs, right? Because we knew those kids, um, they have creative power and energy and they're gonna point us somewhere. Uh, for social status, first we focused on the Carolina, then we focused on Pittsburgh, and then we started to focus on key cities that matter for Black folks with Amma Meyer and social status, Atlanta, Houston, D.C., then you start seeing this too. Now what we're doing, we're focusing on cities with high murder rates, Detroit, Baltimore, because like, yo, if we're going to help people, you got to go where people need help, right? So the juxtaposition is like, yo, what are we after and why? And we're just approaching it different. With 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 Man Year, we got to start doing some things that are business centric. Like, so we going to New York, sure, but we ain't going to Soho. You're going to catch us in Harlem, right? We're going to go where we belong, where we feel comfortable, and we can speak our voice in a way that people just naturally connect to it, right? Like, uh, respectfully, you've, you've been in a room where you're talking about something that somebody don't want to hear. They're like, oh, just motherfucker, well, shut up, right? We got to go where, where our voice connects. So those, we go to London, we got to go to the places where people get us, right? Like I'm not, we're not looking to be accepted. I'm looking to, you know, if you know somebody in the city, if you, you came to Pittsburgh, you hit me like, yeah, I'm in Pittsburgh. What I need to do up here? I'm gonna put you with my man. He gonna make sure you all right. In business is still kind of the same for me. Does that make sense? Actually, Tara, I just want to ask All a right. quick question. There's a question online who relates to this, Jay, if you don't mind. Michael Oyabanjo, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself to ask your question there, because I think it relates to this point. Thank you, sir. First of all, thank everybody. Thank you, James, for having this, like always. Um, I, I think you're asking about my second question. Um, I, I basically asked, do you have things like free game, or anything's planned for like the youth, especially like in the D.C. area? And my first question, I can go back to that one too. I've been taking notes, I'm sorry. Like, do you plan to tell different stories from the different locations of, of your stores? Like, for example, you got one in Charlotte, you got one here in DC. Like, but like I look at the DC area, like right now, it's a whole lot of gentrification going on. And I look at like things like free lunch, that hit hard for me. Like that lunch ticket on the tongue, that hit hard for me. So I think about like things like that. I can see you doing things like that. I just wondered, like, do you have things like that in the works or do you think about things like that? was a little muffled so i think i heard you ask is are we going to go within some of our same cities with additional stores was that was that what the question was we're going to tell stories from the different locations where we where we are like uh, are we going to tell story are, are we going to tell the stories of the different cities yeah. yes the, the the answer to that is absolutely um as we start to, you can't be, you, you can't be in a city without being in a city, right? And when, when the, the, the thing about the pandemic is we all had to go in the house, right? So we had to focus on how we communicated a lot more digitally. And we spent three years fo focusing on how we, how we function uh, digitally. What we've been doing over the last three years also is working on our infrastructure and our, and our, uh, our brick and mortar, uh, let's just say offense for lack of a better word. But as you start to see us get further away from the pandemic, you can, you can almost bet uh, with DC and Baltimore specifically, we've been waiting to get Baltimore online to do this DC Baltimore thing. Everybody talks about the DMV uh, specifically, 
But I think there are unique Baltimore stories and unique DC stories that has to be told. And uh, it's our goal to tell them all and, and tell, them from, t- tell them from the perspective of the people in those places. But I like to believe that um, when we're telling all of our stories, we have every place in mind, but for sure, we're going to do a lot more hyper-local stuff. And, and actually, we still do color code now as, as a way to stand up a lot of local brands and allow those brands to stand up some of those stories. But you'll still start to amplify uh, some of that, too, uh, as we move forward. And actually, um, before we take a question from Space Dare, we have a, a question here from Brian, um, which you're pretty familiar with. Brian, I'm just going to mute you there. You just had a point you just sent me. just want to chime in and unmute yourself there. Yeah, James, I wanted to speak to you about the SWAC speaker series. Um, how you doing, brother? And just the work that you and some of the other board members do when helping some of these student athletes that in the SWAC and uh, just other HBCUs and all the great work that you do, something that maybe some other people on your call should know about, how you inspire other youth in different ways that's in school already. What's good? Be, uh, be, be, be cheated a little bit and told y'all something that we're working on with, with, with the SWAC speaker series. Um, we've been, we've been, a lot of things just got held up with, with, with the pandemic. Like you got all these plans and you, you're going to roll them out and you a year ahead of all these plans. And then all of a sudden you got to freeze everything uh, for what we thought was two months. Like, oh yeah, this is good. We'll be good in two months, and oh yeah, we'll be good in six months. Oh, we'll be good in a year, and we own three years now, and, and don't know where we're going now. But to to B's point, the the speaker series against against the SWAC is something that we've been really excited about doing because the idea of a free game and our voice. Like I'm not the only one that has a voice, and there, there's a lot more people who have stories to share, and I, I want to begin to leverage the network of everyone that we know to start to get in front of, of people and like, yo, start to empower people to want to just be better. I said, I spoke to some kids earlier today and I said, uh, they asked me what could they do to help support me? And I said, be prepared because there's nothing worse than me saying that there's 20 million people behind me to want opportunities. Right. And then the opportunities come and I'd be like, okay, shit, only got 4 million people behind me, right? I'm, I'm short 16 million, right? So I think everybody got to understand the opportunities that we're fighting for. And, and nobody believes it till you come back like, yeah, you, you know, the person has been gone on a mission for a while. And then they come back with the, on the horse, like, yeah, I found it. There's gold. Like, what? We, we thought you was dead. You was never coming back, right? Like, but yeah, it's the whole idea that um, we out here working for something that's, uh, that's probably much bigger than anybody can imagine. And the things that we can accomplish is much bigger than anybody can imagine. And if you don't believe it yourselves, it's going to be hard for you to step into that opportunity and actually believe that you can accomplish the work, right? Like you got to dare to dream crazy shit in order to be able to do crazy shit, right? Like I don't go around thinking about like, normal shit i think about like some other shit right to get to the place where we land it's like uh, well i'll take it we got to get to there next right but it it can't just be us so to b's point the, the the swag series is so important because it allows us to take our experience b's been doing this for a long time but it's allowed it it allows us to take the experience that we've gained over the last 20 years and give it back to youth culture because y'all y'all need the information to be able to draft the work, right? We, we got the relationships, but y'all got to draft the results. We got, I think we got another one. In, we got another one in line. Uh, we got another one in space, Mark, and then we could take four or five in line. I'm seeing, I'm seeing them hands pop up on the screens. I don't want to get... I don't want somebody to digitally smack you for not answering the question, Mark. We got we got one in space. No, is there any questions? Mark, we can go online. 
All right, got you. We have Trey. I see you've had your hand up for a while, so I'm just going to ask you to mute yourself there. Hey, how are you? I'm uh, Trey Edgerton. And so essentially what I wanted to touch on is, um, you know, I went through that that whole, you know, growing up in poverty. Um, I'm from a rural area, so it's a little different from being in the city, but I've grown up and, you know, been exposed to a lot of different things. And one of the things that resonates with me, especially with the free lunch campaign is, you know, how it is for us growing up. And what you see in the sneaker culture today is a lot of people that are into it aren't really connected to the things that people, you know, who are socially, socially economically impacted go through. I work in corporate banking and uh, I see a lot of that in the working world as well. So I love the videos and I love the messages, messages that are driven through them. And I guess what my biggest question is, is how do you plan to grow the impact of those videos to educate those people who are now in the sneak community that may not understand the plight that we as people go through, um, you know, or went through growing up, I should say. Uh, we're doing it. I, I, I think, I think we sit in this room and what's the number of people on zoom right now? And I can't see the screen right now. How many people's on there? So we, we got a room for a hundred people, man. This is really like, 40, 50 million people in impact. Like y'all have no clue what the what what our collective power is. So as long as we continue to do what we've been doing and everybody continue to double down on doing the work, our impact, like yo, this isn't this isn't slowing down, right? For, for us, this is who we are. We ain't going nowhere. And the work, the work is, is something that we focus on every day. And it's the only thing that matters to us, right? Like, obviously we have to be connected and we got to run a meaningful business. But for us, it's about being intentional about telling the stories like, yo, respectfully, fuck cool. Um, it's about culture and it's about uh, creating meaningful change and all of that's That's cool to me, right? So I, I've never stressed about being cool. It's just been a bit natural. And if you didn't think I was cool, then I ain't probably care anyway, right? So it's 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 just more how I'm wired. So I think it's more about us owning our space and doubling down um, to make what we feel is important important, and that's and that's happening. Um, don't ever think that the impact of a hundred people is actually a hundred people because we're affecting way much more than that. If that makes sense. All right, next question here. It's actually a pretty cool one. Are there any upcoming art initiatives within the group? And what are the best ways to become involved? I think that's probably through the AA point A. What's that? Is Are there any art, upcoming art? Are there art initiatives within the Whitaker group? And what are the best ways to become involved? Mark, I'll let you take that one. Uh, well, 38A is actually an existing art gallery um, in Pittsburgh, and there's there's tons of ways for you to be able to be able to show your work there. Um, again, Jay will probably say my email at some point, but shoot me an email at mark at the Whitaker Group GRP uh, dot com and be able to share more information on that. Uh, glad to help in any way. And I'll and, drop my email. go up, Mark. Were you done? I said I was just going to drop my email in the chat, so it's easy to grab. And as he put as he puts his email in the chat, what I, what I would say is, um, we're working on something interesting in the space. And as we start working rolling out a lot of our additional spaces, you're going to start seeing um, a collection that we've been working on for the last ten years start to come to life in spaces, and connect it to the physical space, and obviously on the walls of the space. And you'll start to see if, see us express ourselves through through art and connect artists um, connect to artists in a meaningful way. But again, um, our goal always is to um, uh, just support support people who who uh, who who connect to us and are around us. And when I say connect to us or around us, just me in in one of our cities, stand for what we stand for have a shared vision or align to our shared vision. Go on, Mar, we can, we can take some more online. Perfect. 
Uh, Andrew, you've had your hand up for a while. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself there. You'll see that come up. Oh, Andre, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. There's no sound from your sound. You want to come back to him, Mark? Yeah, Andre, we're going to come back to you in a second. There was a question that came up in the chat while we get... Andre sorted out. There was a question that came up in the chat is what do you do for self-care and mental relief during stressful times? Did you did you did you catch the question? What do you do for self-care and mental Sit relief? In a room with the lights off and locked everybody out and just sit there. Like just, I, I, I call it catching up with my thoughts. Um, some people call it meditating, but I spend a fair amount of time uh, catching up to my thinking. And then I spend, yesterday uh, is a good example. I had a super crazy busy week and I knew it, but there was somebody whose name I won't say that I was meaning to catch up to wildly successful CEO in retirement. And I just, I didn't want nothing. Just figure like, yo, I'm gonna just take the hour that he's been saying, let's catch up, let's catch up. And I took the time to see him. And what I learned is the, the plight of my, the plight of my, what I think is my insanity keeps me sane, right? Like some people be like, oh, you gotta take time for yourself. And I'm like, I am taking time for myself because this is what I wanna do. Right. Don't don't get me wrong. I need a break sometimes like it, today was fucking hard. Right. Um, because you fight, you fight, you fight and you start to feel like you are fighting everybody. And then you just got to like step back for a second and catch your breath and realize like, yo, it's temporary. You're going to get through it. So in those moments, the breathing exercise, catching up to yourself, giving yourself moments to just sit there, close the computer, my, my phone ringer. My phone's always flipped down and I, my ringer's never on. Um, so I just catch calls because I happen to look at my phone, but I do not allow my phone to ring. So I can kind of, kind of make myself believe that I'm controlling the input and output, although I'm looking at my phone all damn day. Um, but it's, it's, it's merely the idea of, I truly love what we do. Like I, don't, like it's no bullshit. This is, I don't, it's all in when people say, well, what do you do for fun? Everything. It, I had to understand it myself. Everything that I love gets included in this. Like when somebody say, what are you like, how do y'all know what to add? Like, I don't know because we have a good experience. And then I'm like, yo, did anybody do that? And they like, yo, I did it. It was crazy. Like, cool. That's something we should probably add. Right. So everything that the people around us collectively love ends up being a part of what we do. So I need, sometimes I need to shut down um, just like any other person. So that's usually Saturday and Sunday, but come Monday, I'm, I'm ready for war. And I spend a lot of time thinking about um, life and death, like, right. The fact that I got to go one day and I ask myself, am I using my time in a way that would make me comfortable if I had to go tomorrow? And I always come back with yes, right? Sometimes it might take me a while. Like, how am I? And then I go to that vacation and I sit there and I get on that vacation and I'm looking at it and I'm just doing this again, right? So every time I relax, I realize that I'm relaxing just to come be more focused and sharp at this, if that makes sense. Uh, we have another question that came up and I've had two sorry if I'm not saying your name, but where do you see concept stores going? Uh, so you see brands taking more of a pop-up shop approach, consistently changing their layout versus having stores set in stone. Um, basically, how do you see concepts, the future of concepts and experience, concept stores and experiences going forward? Depends on who's vision, visioning the brand. Um, some people get really mad at me. It happened to me again today. Today was a bit of a roller coaster. 
today I was told that I'm not supportive of supporting someone who I thought I'd do a really good job supporting. Because usually my answer to their questions is, what do you think? They'll ask me a question. I want to get your opinion. I'm like, well, what's your opinion? I only say that when I think there's only good options. I'm looking at Tanisha again. If she calls me and she says five things, and man, they're all like really good options. I'm like, well, is this a trick question? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Is this a trick question? Question because I can pick any of these five. So this is loaded, right? Like, so then I have to lean on the fact that you're an intelligent person with a point of view. And I have such a strong point of view when I have one that I try to go last on my point of view because when I'm bought in, I'm bought the fuck in. Like I'm, 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 I'm gonna die on the idea at times, if that makes sense. So I try to make sure before I get that bought into something that I let somebody get it out. So when, I, when answering a question about concepts, I think you got really um, smart creative directors. If you like look at Balenciaga and what they do, they own avant-garde. The shit is like they're making people look away that in another generation, people would have looked at them strangely and they own that. Right. If you look at what um, if you look at what LVMH has been able to uh, execute with luxury brands like they bring Tiffany in. And they wrap Tiffany in their way of doing business and modernize the thinking. The thinking becomes what's the best strategy for the item. So if you was asking me what's the best concept for a burger shop, it might look different than uh, the concept for um, if we're doing a um, speakeasy, if that makes sense. So it's it's all it, it all it all lies within the eyes of the creative, but broadly, um, retail at brick and mortar isn't going anywhere. We learned that from everybody coming back outside. Uh, Shopify was at a gazillion dollars a share during the pandemic. That shit dropped like a rock when people got back outside. Right? The human condition is as much as y'all all love social media. This is a person. This is her hand and to touch it has meaning and not in a sexual way, right? It just has meaning in connecting with people in meaningful experiences. You can't like everybody's on vacation. Everybody's in front of like, yo, so brick and mortar per se isn't going anywhere. Right. And as we start to see brands go vertical, somebody, somebody asked me the kid who was sitting there, uh, Jeff, I think was his name, asked me a question about why can't he start his business digitally, right? In 10 years, he may be able to, right? But today, the world is trending towards DTC. So because the world's trending towards DTC, it doesn't make it available for him. Like, yo, uh, everything ebbs and flows. So the idea of concept stores sounds cool. And, and, but like, yo, it's about being on the edge and really understanding how to serve the who you want to serve meaningfully, that dictates what you do, not just the idea of doing something that makes sense. We can keep going online, Mark. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Andre's question. Um, look at a few issues there. I'm going to take his question. He sent it in. What's the biggest challenge with starting a fashion brand? First part of the question. And are you able to offer any advice to brand owners who design their own products? Starting off by wanting to learn more on how brands like yours produce the high quality items for your brand. Uh, my 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 advice to people starting up their own small brand is work hard to build an audience. Um, the harsh advice is no one really cares, right? You care. Show people why you care. I, I put a quote in our, our chat. Quality is built. Um, quality is the word that people use, but it's built one action at a time, right? And if people see it and understand it, they respect it, right? And it also has to connect visually, 
right? It has to connect to some of the senses, but connect to your out of audience meaningfully and then figure out how to scale that way of connecting. Easy to say, right? But everybody just wants to get their brand, built an Instagram site, built a website, call some stores. My stuff's cool. Buy it. Hey, Kanye West, where it is? Kanye wore it. You should buy it. I'm cool, right? But for, there's something to be said about going slow. Like, take your time. Go slow. I think he asked me if we will we accept outside capital. If we accepted outside capital, all of a sudden there's going to be somebody ringing my phone saying, James, hurry up. Man, we beat into our own drum. So I don't want nobody else's money because I don't want nobody calling me, right? So if you go slow and built it in a meaningful way, the speed of the market will make you grow, right? So let the market dictate your speed and be mindful about what you need, when you need, and why, if that makes sense. Next question here from Kyra Lindsay. Uh, I'm curious to hear about your mindset when you stated that you went broke in your interview with Bima. Like, what were you thinking of on how to pivot after running out of money? Um, 2008 was the only time in my adult life when technically I had assets that would create money every month. But in a singular moment, it was the first time I said, hold up. I don't think I got no money. <laughs> like, this ain't adding up. Um, but it's it's a mind state, right? It's 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 a mind state shift. It's 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 a pause, it's a think, and it's it's a natural inclination to say, like, uh no one ever asked me a question about money, but it's something I actually talked about earlier. Rewind um business, like everybody talks about James the entrepreneur, like, oh, you done this, you done that, you done this. My first infatuation was not being poor. It was the first thing that I focused on. Like, how am I going to not be poor? Like, let me start there, right? So starting there was me understanding what were the building blocks to build wealth, right? So when I said I didn't go broke, it's because at that time I had six rental properties and them motherfuckers was rented and tenants were sending a check on the first. So on the first, I was going to have money, right? Because I built an inf I built an infrastructure for myself with a with the stopgap to at least make sure that my bills were covered, right? But that account, the other account, didn't have nothing in it. Actually, it was negative because AT and T pulled some money out the phone and it went through and it made my account go negative. But for me, it was just the idea of like, yo, getting sharp on a business and asking myself. I just done the exercise with uh, B U and Indija. And saying to ourselves, what do we need that matters and why? There's some times in a business cycle where you could take risk and you can drive things. When I was flat broke, I had to get on the phone and leverage my name. Like, yo, I need to get an order. I need this. And I need uh, 10 days terms. And I only call people for things that I knew I could sell. Right? So I knew at the time we was moving denim hand over fist. And we probably been under buying denim to buy more things that we thought were cool, right? So we didn't buy the thing that was driving revenue. We were buying things that we thought people were cool. Well, in tough times, cool shit don't sell. Necessities do, right? So I realized the cycle that we were in, to your point before they called it a recession, I realized the cycle that we were in and I started to focus on necessities. And when I focused on necessities, I quickly realized, well, damn, I'm paying them 70 dollars for these jeans that we're selling for 160 i'm gonna get on this flight to japan in this recession and i'm gonna go get me some jeans some fabric in japan and i'm gonna sell it i'm gonna get it sewn in hong kong and i'm gonna get it back to the states i'm gonna land it and i'm gonna sell these jeans my money problem was gone so it's it's, it's just a way of thinking about the problem in, in tough times, I tend to not get stressed. It's a weird thing. I just tend to think that makes sense. When, when things get tough, I just think. I don't allow myself to live in the problem. I spend more time focusing on the solution than the problem. If you, if you just fester in the problem, you're not going to stress, stress your way into a solution. <laughs> you only got to like attack the, the issue at hand. And, and that problem was money, which can be difficult to solve in some cases, but thank God in that moment it wasn't.
Well, I made it sound easy. There was some stress, but I got through it. We got a question from Discord. Uh, during the planning and designing process for collaborations, do you ever consider how you want those collaborations to be perceived in the future, thinking 20, 30 years from now? And how does that inform the materials that you pick for do you want them to last and change over a period of time? Um, so how do you pick the materials for them? Well, well, it, it goes about own, owning, owning the narrative, right? If you own the narrative and there's a clear story, that's the best part about stories. Because when you tell a good story, somebody repeats it. Again, the human condition is to talk. Oh, did you hear what happened to her? Da -da -da -da. Ooh, what? And then she go, ooh, I was with such and such. She told me that. It, it, ooh. And, and the next person be like, man, I was just, they, they did a 10th person with the story, but they tell us it's, it's a part of the human condition. So in built in product, we, we want to tell stories because the stories will transcend the product and create the classic, right? And then the things that we work on, that's why I said always pay homage to the OGs, because if, if you pay homage to something that's, that's authentically itself, you're never worried about um, that. And, and other times you got to take a risk and, and, and drive your own story, right? And, and you see us do that as well, but it's always rooted in, I'm always looking, thinking about how are we going to think about this 10, 15 years from now? And how, 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 how are the things that we're creating aging? That makes sense. Go ahead, Mark, you can keep running them. No worries. Um, it's actually a really good question is, um, I think that's kind of a bit of a foundational question for you, but um, how do you stay motivated as a business owner? What drives you? Um, what we want to get after drives me um being good being great executing at a really high level drives me like when i see opportunity to get better i'm not like focused on what better looks like for somebody else i look at somebody and be like yo this is good but it could be better if you do a b c x y z and challenging one another to be better and i think in general um the opportunities that solving big human issues like I'm never, let me say this clear. I don't think in my lifetime, I'm going to solve a lot of the things that we're trying to solve. But if we empower and activate 50 million people against solving the same thing and 50 million people, hundred million people start approaching that same issue in a different way, then we can start to solve it differently. It's about us being bought out. Like, you know, Friday night, everybody want to get in the streets. If you took the same emotion and excitement about getting in the streets, and solving our problem every day and being in the streets is good. Enjoy the streets. I ain't not going to be in the streets. But what I'm saying is you have to approach solving the issues with that level of excitement. And the thing that you'll notice as you start to do something for a long time, you start to care less about, you know, you get older, your life gets established. Uh, everybody wants to get married, have kids, have a family. Like when stability kicks in, the idea of uh, having a foundation starts to drive you a little more. And where I'm at in my journey right now, I'm so uber focused on understanding the energy that I have and what I want to get out of the opportunity. It's more the reason why we won't take other people's money too, because it's, it's like, I could see, it's like so crystal clear what I see and what I think that we can capture. And I'm just want to capture it so bad, but it's also so elusive that it makes me have to keep chasing it, right? It's the hunt. I, I still, I still love it, right? Like people are looking like, oh, y'all killing it. I'm like, no, we ain't. Got fucking T just called and said, B just called and said, Terra just, Terra just my fault. Terra just called and said, I can think of 15 things or 20 things right now that we ain't killing it at. So cool, y'all think we killing it, but wait till we really kill it. And then the canvas be like, bro, that doesn't ever exist. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a thing that we chase, and. It's, it's, it's a part of like just being a motivated person and being driven, right? That's it's just called being self-motivated and self-driven. And I, I, I like to, I used to believe that it was something that you were born with, but no, we all get excited about things and it's just about channeling that energy. Uh, we got one in space, KJ. All right, so we, as we, uh, 
I guess, move past um, or evolve past experiential retail, right? And more into, as we start to un unveil some of these concepts, right? Um, do you feel, and you mentioned 2030 and 2040, do you feel an obligation to, and then, and then also, I think people are starting to gradually learn about your genuine and authentic interest in development, real estate, all of those things. Do you feel uh, an obligation to do a bigger or have a bigger imprint, you know, in that industry? Like, and, and, and can you see a space, you know, our spaces being anchors to, you know, mixed use communities, stuff like that. So funny story and the story will answer the question. I have a rule and the recording's in progress. I have a rule. The rules always take to meeting, right? So even, even if I know I'm going into the meeting and I know what I'm going to say in the meeting, I'm still going to go take the meeting. Curiosity says I have to go take the meeting, right? So there was someone who was interested in buying us. Nobody, I think nobody on our team probably knows this. And he said, well, if we give you this money, the way, the way your brain works, what would you do with it? You know what I said to him? I want to build a country. <laughs> the whole idea of the whole thing, like, like all of it, like the way of like building, what does, what does a modern, what does the modern world look like when you get to start from scratch with people that are rooted in the right things? So what you're absolutely saying is, is, 100% right. Like, I would love to, like the idea of creating like these small spaces, it's a feeling that we own. I'm hyper sensitive to walking up, seeing door fingerprints on the glass, seeing, seeing that. There's, there's a way that I would like each of you to feel as you walk into our spaces with some level of intentionality. I would love for your children to feel that as they went into their educational experience. I would love for a mother to feel like that as she went into her mothering, like, right? So there's parts of the human experience that I would love to have the financial privilege to begin to obsess. That's another, I mean, that, like, that as a whole, like, if I ever had that level of, of cap, even, even a project that we're doing here that, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, we're doing a, a big project here any idea of that project is we've worked on single spaces, but you're going to see us work on a city block and we'll get to own the idea of how that feels. That's us. You can't tell us to leave. You can't tell us to get out. You can't tell us ours. It's ours, right? So we get to dictate how that feels, right? If I would have had it my way, we would own several blocks around a block. But the idea of capital comes in, right? And the way my bank account, savings account is set up, right? But as we continue to evolve, I would love to, if I had another career, it would be, it would be that. It would be the idea of how to do shit. If you, if you look at, like, you, you look at Black Panther, we all, if you were white, black, or green, you love Wakanda. Like, ooh, Wakanda's dope to the motherfucker, right? Like you love the idea of how that existed in a, as a secret place in the world that was an oasis, right? That everything was at, like, who the fuck? Yeah, I would love to do that. And now I got, I got a follow up. Uh, Go so we'll be in, we 10, 15 collabs in, 15. I, I don't even count, but go ahead, finish the question. Somewhere around there, right? Top two. Oh, that's like, that's like trying to say uh, the, the ones you haven't seen yet. Um, <laughs> it's a real answer because like I, I give you the better one if I told y'all what we were working on for 2024 you'd be like man get the fuck out of here <laughs> that I won't do but it's 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 we 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 in this business we get to work in the future that's the best part about it we get to see the future and we get to be vulnerable and we get to be scared as hell like oh my god what they gonna think when they see it do you like it why <laughs> right like oh it's 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 the gift and the curse of this business oh go ahead lee
100%. Lito's question was, do we plan to go deeper with APB? And do we plan to drive deeper into the HBCU experience? And that's what B was hinting on earlier. Um, B and Dr. Uh, Dr. Charles, they, they oversee the swag. And we cooking. And it just takes so long. Like, y'all get in and be like, oh, this is crazy. This, how did this idea just seem like it was all of a sudden? Like, all of a sudden, we've been working on this shit for 15 years. Like, like sometimes it's fast, but like most times, things take forever to execute. But uh, there's a lot of things that we're working on, but uh, respectful to the environment we're in, uh, respectful to building teams, respectful to our teams, respectful to our teams learning, respectful to I've been doing this for 15 years and I just met teammates in this room for the first time that's been working with us for three or four weeks and they need to connect and get their mind wrapped around what we're doing and why, right? So um, it's it's all in the right time, but the idea of um, empowering youth culture and with HBCUs being at the front, hell yeah. And again, this is still the beginning. He, uh, somebody said, like, how many projects y'all done? I still feel like we ain't done none, right? I'm still, the, the energy still feel the same. Gully. Uh, oh, God, I'll tell you something to rock me. Um, it was a banking thing, uh, s swaps, uh, the, the things that people make money off of that pisses me off. Oh my God. It pisses me off. Oh, yeah. like being broke, you know, when you ain't got shit, I mean, nothing. When you make, trying to make the motherfucking penny scratch together, right? You sit there and you'd be like, Oh my God, I can't wait till I get right. So sometimes I sit in some of these rooms while I'm having these conversations and hear how people make money. I'm like, if y'all ever, ever told regular people this shit, they would fucking riot. Like, like the idea of how easy when you have access to markets and access to capital and access, that's why I fight for people to really get themselves in position. Because when you have access to the room, if you ever knew, remember Chris Rock said it, if, if, if poor people knew how rich people live and it's real, because the, the, the differences between um, what used to be 80-20 is now like 99-1, right? And I'm an earn-in guy. Like, I'm not a gift guy. Like, I'm not a guy that's giving you nothing. You're going you to earn it. Because the reason you got to earn it is because I got to trust you. Because once I pay you, I pay you to trust you, right? And when I say, ah, we, I pay you to trust you. So I ain't got to think about it. If I have to think about it, then are you really working? Does that make sense? You're, 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 you're subsidizing my brain for your paycheck, <laughs> right? So you, we had this conversation before, Samir, right? But I say that to say the opportunity when everybody gets better to really access, there's so many opportunities um, to do things and to, to be more tactical. When interest rates, when, 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 when COVID happened, and the feds put all the money in the system, anybody with a brain knew that inflation was gonna go up because you threw a lot of money in the system. People with money went out and got swaps. They took it, they went out and bought assets that had nothing to do with nothing because they just wanted to swap. They wanted to get into the swap at a low rate because they knew once this whole COVID thing ended, what was gonna happen to the rates? It was gonna go up. And regardless of the asset they bought, they made money off the swap. A lot of money, right? So imagine you go buy this water, you buy that water for a dollar, but you want to sell the water for a dollar, but because you financed the, the water using a swap dollar, you make $15 and you sell the water for a dollar. That's just cheating, right? Yeah, that is what made me go like, dang, damn, these motherfuckers is cheating. So that, that's the answer to that one. Um, what we got online, Mark? We got a, we got two great questions, but one that builds on what you got here. With so many ideas, how do you organize and prioritize them? And how do you stay organized? Uh, 
I call you, <laughs> call Tanisha, call Kev, call Joe. It's a team, man. Like I, I, I deploy. It's our team gives me the ability to do what I do well: think, strategize, vision, connect, prioritize, create strategic relationships, execute. Having being surrounded by people that allow me to be me helps us be us, right? Like I tell people all the time, like, yo, I need you to be really good at it and have a point of view that's your point of view. Not that I won't help you. I expect, I made the joke about subsidizing my brain. I expect my brain to be subsidized, but you got to wean off of it, right? You can't subsidize 100% of my brain forever, right? You can start at 90, then you got to go to 80, 70, down it. And then once you get to zero, you got to be a rock star coming back to me saying like, yo, this is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. This is why we're doing it. Any questions? I'm like, damn, can we do this, this, and this? Now we already doing this, this, and this. We're doing it because of this. And I thought you would say that. And I called you and asked you this, and we aligned to that. And this is what we're doing. You good? I'm like, yeah, I'm great. <laughs> right? That gives me the space to be able to be like, oh, shit. Uh, B got this buying thing. T got this motherfucking. She got this uh, uh, brick and mortar thing. Kev got the team. Mark got the brand. Like, I got to go now and look at the whole sum of what we got and be like, oh, I, oh, I need to go find some other shit for us to do because we could, we could solve something bigger. We might need to go to Mars now. You know what I'm saying? We got, we might be able to, to KJ's point, we might be able to go start that city now. We get to a point where nobody's subsidizing my brain when everybody's using what they got. Obviously, there's, a, there's some direction and leadership and vision and direction is set, set from my side. But when our team is all completely locked in and we're good now, but when we get to a point when everybody is on point, oh God, that's when, that's how I'm able to, you know, I keep myself organized tactically by writing everything down. But executionally, uh, it's surrounding myself by people that allow us all to be great. That makes sense. We have a great question here from Anika. Anika, I'm actually going to ask you to unmute yourself. I'll get you next question. time, man. I love you. Go to ask Mark. A question there. Anika, I'm just asking you to mute yourself and ask your question. Hi, Mr. Whitener. How are you? How you doing? Doing good. So my question is, is um, what is your advice to a woman such as myself wanting to start her own sneaker boutique? Where and how to start? and how to get the right accounts to get the right product in their boutique. And with having such success, have you ever thought about having interns so that you can show them the structure and how everything works? I, I would blast Tanisha right now and put her email address online for a retail intern who wants to work on women concepts, which we have two launching next year. So you can hit Tanisha up, but go through our HR at the Whitaker GRP and that intern experience can be crafted for you by a young lady near you. <laughs> um, second, the honest to God truth is there's a huge void in our industry right now for one thing, women-owned businesses. There aren't enough women-owned businesses uh, that serve women. If you have a woman, if you're a woman, and even if you're on our team, you're a woman and you got a point of view and you want to drive a business like, yo, in the next, it's going to take a second to figure it out. So I think the window will be open for a while. Um, that, that space, it's 2000. I think I said something to somebody earlier about it being timing. If you're a woman and you want to start a business, mm, good timing. Timing's now. Um, to learn, um, 100% asking the right questions in these platforms is, is the reason why we do free game. If I'm you, I definitely would hit spam our HR until you figure out an uh, internship situation. If that's something that you're passionate about, we, we're definitely um, looking for women that is this passionate about um, doing the right work. But again, um, we really, internship, you might think like, oh, it's going to be like get coffee. Like, no, 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 no. I'm on the clock when I'm woke. I'm off the clock when I'm asleep and I don't sleep much. And the people around me work similar. So if you if you come around these parts, expect to work. Next question we have here is how do you view the sneaker cleaning industry? Um, I'm old school, yo. 
like the idea of crep and like the sink or clean and stuff is like I'll like still use like a shower rag and soap and a toothbrush. <laughs> like, but I'm 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 a latchkey kid, yo. Like I cleaned my shoes before I got here. So I think personally, I think, I mean, you asked me my personal opinion. I hope this don't piss nobody off. I think this sneaker cleaning industry is soap and water, right? Like, like if people were smart, they would just use that old toothbrush and some soap and water and clean their shoes. And like the idea of refurbing them is the same. My son has figured it out. The shoes he love when I go to sleep, I keep wondering like, why the fuck is the dryer booming like that? Because this dude is putting his shoes in a washer and a dryer. He, he's microwave cleaning his shoes. Right. So I think I think there's a lot of you, you got 500 million people in the U.S. So there's going to be people who don't want to do the work and everybody's looking for instant solutions. So I think that business isn't going anywhere, but it's something that I personally don't participate in. I still use a hard bar of soap with the with the rub the toothbrush on it and then hit the sides and then get, get it with the rag. And then I still wear my socks folded in the front so my shoes don't crease like I'm only going to get one pair of shoes in a year so it's like I'm conditioned that way so for me the sneaker cleaning industry is just like one that I understand but personally I don't participate in it oh Samir you had a question or B you had a question you go first then Samir yeah, yeah. I'll go first and then pass it to Samir uh, we kind of talked about our banners earlier and, and spoke towards how Manier is uh, definitely a more mature customer to storytell through. Social status is a bit more nostalgic and youthful, but obviously with everything that we do kind of being geared around change, APB is next up, but they don't necessarily always understand the references that all of this is built on, right? Like yep. the 13-year-old kid might not understand the importance of a penny. Yep. So I guess understanding change being the most important piece what excites you the most about speaking towards the apb kid and uh i guess how do you anticipate maneuvering the challenges of having the the new sneaker new sneaker head or the young sneaker head that doesn't understand the the things that we know and love so twofold um you answered the question thank you for leading the witness witness it's it's the simple answer is listening i'm 40 so in order for me to be sharp in a 30-year-old decade, there's somebody around me that's in their late 30s, somebody that's in their early 30s, right? That's conversations. There's somebody in their late 20s, somebody in their early 20s, somebody in their late teens, somebody in their early teens. And I'm constantly listening. Like, like I'm, I'm, when I stick around my daughter's party, she might think that I'm there to like spy on her. I'm there to see what they I like what they're genuinely interested in. When I go on TikTok, it's not to see what's happening on TikTok. I'm curious to see what 12 year olds care about, right? And then we get to leverage our privilege. By listening, you see what's new. Um, the privilege is the response time, right? Because James at some point was reaching out to every brand. Hey, can you please talk to me? Please, 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 please. Now, Brands reach out to us, right? So when you built a bit of a reputation, it's for us to now always be open-minded. How many times have I said to you, B, respond to every email. One of those emails is the next Kanye. I don't know which one. Uh, 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 Nigel uh, uh, told me before, like, yo, bro, before he got popular, he called our rally store, called, like, yo, Hey, hey, yo, I love social status. Just called every store till he got me. Like, yo, it's Nigel Sylvester, bro. Yeah, like, yo, like, like, yo, when you think about the stories that happen, like, watch, watch Ye's documentary. That first episode, he got shit on all episode. That's how it works. We're not going to be the people shitting on people. We're going to be the people like, eh, we'll try it. Right. The only way, you know, is if you fail with somebody and just because you fail with somebody don't mean B sent me a, a brand. We had like 17 percent sell through and B wasn't dropping a brand. It was like, yo, I think this is something that we personally believe in. 
I know the market's softening. We need to find a way to continue to work with them. I'll get back to you with how. Does that make sense? So it's not about always about dollars and cents, even when it's about dollars and cents, but it's about having real conversations and being honest with people because when you're listening, right? And when you're present, you don't miss it. When you're not present and you get arrogant and you start to think you're cool and you look down on people, then people want to attack you. That makes sense. They want to go, they want to go at you. You know what I'm saying? I'm not competing against nobody. We are building with people. Does that make sense? Samir, and then back to the long line. No, there you go. Okay. Oh. You mentioned about starting up a country, uh, which to me, you know, sounds super aspirational and I, and I love it in the shorter term before that do you see any role for you in politics like oh no man listen it's you can run for president you can run for mayor you win man listen Come on. if i was a politician they would have to they would have to create a presidential role for all the united governments of the world and Everybody be willing to work in unison to fix humanity. And I would be interested in that. But I'm, I'm, I'm sober enough to understand that, you know, the way Putin set up, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> your politics, I think, I think honestly, the way that the construct of humanity set up right now is a uh, world world just, just controlled by money. And the environment has to be changed through our action as consumers to choose where we place our dollars and us forcing the people who we place our dollars with to act in ways that are responsible, right? So we are the new politicians, right? Like when we talk about um, Republicans and Democrats, we'd be like, man, fuck them all. We still got to vote, right? But we got to start being intentional about voting at the booth, but also voting with our dollars, right? Because when we vote with our dollars, we have the ability, if we all said everybody in unison, nobody spends money tomorrow. And the world shuts down on a Tuesday, stock market, everything, governments will erupt. And it will be like, oh shit, who said that? And how do we get a meeting with him or her? Right. And then we say on Wednesday, we all going to go spend money on a uh, little pookie chicken. Right. And little pookie chicken got pre-orders for a billion dollars after being a hundred thousand dollar business. Right. That's power. Right. When we learn how to leverage that kind of power, then it'll be a different world. But we got a long way to go on both. No politics for me. Uh, Mark, what we got online? Uh, we got a question here. Do you believe the sneaker industry can sustain the momentum it's built in the last 10 years uh, with some challenges across the industry uh, and some of the brands limiting some of their supply? Um, is it safe to say the industry is becoming too volatile or what are you looking, what do you see coming up in the future? It says, can we, can we sustain our energy? Uh, can, the, can the industry as a whole sustain the momentum it's built over the last 10 years? Um, it, it has to be, it has to, listen, before we, and when it's elusive, it's cool. And, and, and the market's gotten bigger, where, where the, of, of not standing for much as an industry and not having a point and purpose, right? I mean, I'm a bit redundant in what I say, right? So if we only try to serve uh, the God of excess, uh, the God of excess and the God of cool, then nah, we did, right? I think something else will be cool, right? If you remember, remember when Black Friday was crazy? You know what killed it? The iPhone, right? Because the importance shifted from um, consumer goods to technology, right? And tech is now the thing. And all the tech came through the phone. 
And then we started seeing this shift towards street culture and luxury because it was rooted in something that was authentic and deeply connected. But if that authenticity is lost, so is the rest of it and only the real ones will live. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a TBD, honestly. Uh, next question is any interesting upcoming Jordan collaborations on the way? Um, obviously there was eyes on the my year 12. Uh, anything you want to speak to on that? Um, we're going to continue to work with uh, Jordan brand in a collaborative way for the foreseeable future and our goals our, our shared vision, our shared vision with Jordan brand and even starting to become Nike Inc. is in lockstep. And I would even go further to say, um, shout out to our brand partners. And I'm not going to name them all because I would be giving some stuff up because even if they um, don't understand, they want to support in a meaningful way. And not in a way that's just like trying to capitalize on sales, but they're rethinking what support looks like. So for us, um, Jordan brand is a forever thing. Nike is a forever thing. Uh, the, the leaders in those companies um, have like made it clear. Uh, we stand together. So I think less about the product, more about the idea of, of if we're going to do something, we're going to do it meaningfully for every reason that we said earlier today. So it's going to get fun. We're going to only try to do things that are really fun or smack the shit out the world and try to solve a really big problem or talk about one. All right. Next question. In your opinion, does the world need more independent designers and or fashion streetwear brands right now? <laughs> Somebody trying to get me smacked. Hey, uh, honestly, uh, the world needs more people who care in a meaningful way. If caring in a meaningful way is through streetwear, cool, let it be. If you're just making money, be an investment banker. If you just want to make money, go be an investment banker. If you just want to make money, go do something else that's not in my industry because I would rather not have people around us whose primary focus is dollars and cents. I rather there are people around us who's rooted in um, something that's a lot more meaningful. So you, you, you're, if, if, you, if you come to me with a hair brain scheme and getting rich, I'm gonna probably just direct you to a book or say something nice to like get you to end the conversation. Interesting one coming in. Any interest to in working with reliable African retailers like Shelf Life? Africa, any interest in Africa overall? Say that again, Mark. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a direct question about uh, working with African retailers in the African retail landscape. Any interest in that way? Obviously, shelf life is mentioned, but do you have eyes on the African marketplace? Well, based on you, Mark, I'll let you answer this one. I mean, I'm very biased. Um, definitely very biased, but obviously there's a lot of a lot of growth happening. Diaspora is a the most important um, socioeconomic power right now. So definitely eyes over there I mean, for the future. Obviously, a lot of things going through the mind, but um, great to see great African retail kind of grow. Uh, being an African kid myself growing up in the Ivory Coast, um, we didn't have we didn't have shops like Shelf Life and others. So shout out to you guys and looking forward to seeing more happen on the continent. I, I wanted to make sure that we, we pay, pay some homage to my man, Mark, and where you're from. But yeah, man, our eyes is on everything. It's, it's not nothing that we're not talking about. But again, the way our checking account and our savings account is set up, we can't do everything. That's the only thing when you asked about going public. The only thing, the only time I ever really start thinking about outside money is when like I'm really like today when I'm mad at the whole world and I want to do something that just fuck them up. Like, oh, I know what we're going to do. We're going to fucking start a new America. I'm gonna put that bitch on a on a we're gonna buy some fucking a body of land and move people over from John. How much do that cost? John be like, you're gonna need 18 billion dollars. Like, who got that? Like, call fucking Elon Musk and see if we can borrow 18 billion. 
And then Elon don't call us back and I wake up the next day and go back to work. <laughs> Any last question in space? Um, I think it's just more of a question that was sent digitally here we can ask, but just want to- No, we, we, we can wrap it up. I, 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 I enjoyed this session because I came in stressed out and I feel much better now. So I appreciate y'all for uh, being therapy. I think I said it a gazillion times. I get more out of this than y'all do. So I, 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 I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Mark, what we got online? The last question I got was a direct question I received and just gonna ask it there. What can we look forward to um, as we close out the year? You always have something big planned for the end of year. Anything you wanna say? Um, you can look forward for us, 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 us just continue to stand up what we believe in. Like, there ain't no real secrets these days, man. I think Joe just terminated somebody in our warehouse for leaking information. Like, there is there a secret these days? Like, like, like we, from a product perspective, I think, you know, a lot of the things are speculated and Usually the internet is undefeated, right? I ain't, we ain't going to beat the internet. Internet is undefeated. Right? So, but the thing that pisses me off about it is um, the power of the stories we're going to tell. So I, I, Mark, again, I would say this one to you. And when we get in these conversations about what we want to talk about, um, it's just about, you know, the, the, the moment where, if you remember the air in this video, the moment where, the dude came in and snatched the bag of money, right? And, and how that like fucked people up. And Mark remembers the morning we 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 showed that video. There were people who seen that video and said, "Oh my God, that's a bit, that's a lot. This it's a little, you know, you, you guys are pushing. It's gonna offend somebody, right?" So I think you can expect us to talk about things that are meaningful um, to people who don't have a voice. And it's going to piss people off to people who want to change things in a way that helps hurts people who don't have a uh, who, do, who don't have an equal voice. So I think the things that will shock you is how we're going to approach our storytelling around some of the things that you're most excited about. I think that wraps this. For and if, oh, go for it. Oh, Mark, you about to say something? No, no, I was about to wrap. So go for it. Finish. Go for it. I didn't hear him. What you say again? So, oh, I said oh. I was going to rap because you were oh. taking the last question. Rapping. <laughs> again, um, this is uh, it's always great for me because I came in and again, not having a very good day. Um, and less about any one thing. It's just more about what it takes to push us forward and my responsibility to our team and our brand and what it is that we get after. But it's always good to see people who care uh, more than me. I'm not going to say as much as me. I will say more than me because, again, I operate from a position of privilege. And when you are working to become it, the drive that it takes to do it every day is um, it's something that can't be matched. So I, I applaud all of y'all for putting the time in. Y'all could, could have done anything tonight. Um, but y'all chose to sit and talk to us to get information and fellowship together and do life and do therapy together. So I appreciate it and just continue to meaningfully invest into the things that are important to you and continue to hold yourself accountable to the things that you want and how you want to shape the world and be fucking crazy, right? Like there, there's something to be said. And when I say crazy, I mean, don't, don't allow people to stop you from having your big dream or big idea, don't let it get, don't, don't let it get shut down. Don't, don't assimilate um, to the idea of, of being mediocre. Like there's an expectation that um, America became great because uh, people who were looked at as average had really big ideas and there's big ideas in, in, in everything that we do collectively. So again, I appreciate all of y'all.